Hello, my name is Annie Paperno. I'm a graduate student here at Old Miss. I am getting a master's degree in higher education administration. Uh, before I went back to school, I was a graphic designer in the private sector for about 15 years. So I know a lot about um, looking for a job, applying for jobs, and what employers are looking for. Um, this presentation today is going to go into some detail about resumes. In the future, we will be doing presentations on virtual interview techniques, cover letters, and more. So thank you for joining us. Uh, let's get started. So what are the steps for a successful job search? This series will cover professional correspondence and interview strategies. Before you begin, let's go over some terminology. What is a resume? A resume is a document created and used by a person to present their background, skills, and accomplishments. Resumes can be used for a variety of reasons, but most often they are used to secure new employment. Uh, you want to start your resume before you begin the job search. What if you are looking online and you find the most fabulous job opportunity, but you don't have your resume ready? You're going to lose a lot of time building that resume and you may miss the deadline to apply for the job. So I really recommend starting now, even if you're a junior, you know, a senior, you really want to start getting that resume ready before you graduate. And before you start laying out the resume, you do want to begin brainstorming. Don't just start typing. You're gonna get overwhelmed. You might not know what to put on the resume. You really want to start brainstorming. Um, what are your experiences and skills that you can highlight on the resume? So here are a few ideas to get you started with your brainstorming. You want to think about uh, transferable skills. You want to think about relevant experience, any leadership experience you have, activities, any honors clubs you're in, any hard skills. So hard skills are technical skills like computer skills and your soft skills, which are communication, organization and research, just to name a few. And finally, we're gonna talk about power verbs, action verbs. So these are the word, the way you're going to describe your experiences and skills using power verbs in a resume. What exactly are transferable skills? Transferable skills are you learn in classes, part-time jobs, internships, volunteer work, and even extracurricular activities. A resume is going to take these experiment experiences and translate them into relevant skills for the job you're applying for. Skills such as negotiating, persuading, and public speaking are a few transferable communication skills. So I'm sure you all have had classes where you needed to uh, present where you needed to work on a team, where you needed to collaborate. And there's ways to get this experience into your resume and have it sound professional and transferable. So skills such as coordinating tasks, managing conflict and planning events. These are examples of leadership, organization and management skills. You wanna think about time you took a lead on a project or organized an event. It does not have to be something that you did in school. It can be an athletic experience, a volunteer work, or a part-time job. Here's a very long list of transferable skills. I'm not gonna go over each and every one. Um, I'm happy to send you this document if you needed it. You can also Google transferable skills. But just to call out a few that would be relevant to an undergraduate resume, um, coaching and mentoring. This is when you can give feedback in a constructive way. You help others to increase their knowledge or skills. Perhaps you volunteered at an elementary school. Maybe you worked um, on a, uh, you coached for a soccer team. These are, there are skills that you learned during these experiences that can transfer to your resume and be employable uh, skills. Creative thinking. You're able to generate new ideas, invent new things, create images or designs, find new solutions to problems. So this is another thing that you could translate to your resume if you have uh, marketing classes, any kind of creative work, 
um, even writing, you know, that you've, if you've written a really extensive paper on a topic, this is creative thinking, problem solving, decision making, planning, critical thinking. All of these are transferable skills. What are soft skills? Soft skills are traits that make you a good worker. They're things like work ethic, organization, communication, collaboration, and leadership. Now, you do not list these on your resume. Um, these soft skills, employers are going to assume you have them. You should have a good work ethic. You should have good communication skills. You should be organized. But you do want to point to these skills with your skills and experiences that um, you gained in your undergraduate career. So for example, here is a bullet point resume statement that highlights soft skills. It doesn't list them, but it highlights them. Implemented strategies for rollout project by listening to feedback from 20 customers to create new process guidelines to meet month end deadline. So this example references problem solving, listening to feedback, customer service, time management, and adaptability. It's all in one bullet point. Now to the right, I have a lot of soft skills listed, uh, decision-making, collaboration, coordination, interpersonal skills, good attitude, strong work ethic. Um, these are all examples of skills employers are gonna be looking for. If you worked in a restaurant or a store, you have a lot of experience communicating, um, having a good attitude, being detail-oriented, problem-solving, so if you have a job that you don't think can transfer to the industry that you want to work in, you know, you learned so many of these soft skills in your past jobs. So you want to find a way to highlight those soft skills. Now, what are hard skills? You can list hard skills in a resume. So these are technical skills that you have, maybe uh, technical skills, computer skills, analytical skills, marketing skills, or management skills. You uh, do not want to just copy and paste the skills you think you have. You can look at a job description or resumes that are out there for the industry that you want to work in. It's really helpful to do the research about what other people are looking for when in the different job um, opportunities that are out there in the industry you want to work in. So do some research, see what hard skills people have. Um, if you don't have them, then you know where you, you have a little bit of work to do. If you do have them, it's great to list those skills. And you can also highlight hard skills in your bullet points in your resume, which I will go into further detail later. But in the bullet points, you can highlight the hard skills. For example, created Excel reporting spreadsheets that forecasted and analyzed year-end result. The above example makes it clear you know the industry-specific vocabulary and you have a working knowledge of financial reporting. So your resume is a way to communicate to your employer the skills that you know, the experiences you have, and how, how they're gonna transfer into that job description that they're looking to fill. What are action verbs? Action verbs uh, are going to be used in resumes. You do not use pronouns. You don't use full sentences. You're going to use bullet points. So you will use action verbs to start each bullet point. Again, like the transferable skills, there are hundreds of different action verbs that you can find on Google, but here are a few. If you are working on a school project, this is kind of a way to think about it in a different, uh, different strategy. You led the project, you developed a project, you researched a project, you achieved a goal. And underneath all of these categories are different action verbs you can use. You developed, you established, you engineered. These all sound very professional. So instead of just saying, oh, I don't know, I just worked on this group project in my marketing class, you actually did a lot more than that. So for example, uh, to the right, the bullet points show that this person oversaw a team of five peers to engineer and conduct a survey on student graduation rates in the state of Mississippi, or implemented research strategies to investigate child-teacher ratios in public schools. 
So these are great ways to highlight experience that you have, maybe an undergraduate, that it's gonna transfer to the job you're looking for. Now we're gonna talk about how to speak to your choice of major. A lot of you have the multidisciplinary studies degree or the bachelor of the university studies degree. So the multidisciplinary studies is uh, combining three minors. The university studies has emphasis. Either way, you need to be confident about speaking about your major. Um, when you're introducing yourself, you want to be able to talk about your goals, your education, and, and really where you wanna go. So you'll need an elevator pitch, which is a one to two minute introduction that speaks to your education. And the goal of this elevator pitch is to sound intentional, confident, and professional. So here's some phrases to get you thinking. Uh, you really wanna get out that notebook, get on your laptop, type some things out, just start brainstorming. Write down all the interesting classes that you took. Uh, try to get away from thinking about your major as that it just sort of happened, that you just sort of found yourself studying. There's, there's intention, intentionality behind your major. So what, what really made you choose these classes and what really made you enjoy the ones that you enjoyed the most? Some phrases uh, to help you get thinking about this idea. You are in a field that's customized field of study that will stand out to employers. You have a mix of passion and practical skills. Your major helped you to find connections and develop problem solving skills. Maybe you chose to do the interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary study major because it's entrepreneurial. You knew what you wanted to do, you had a vision, you wanted to combine three minors and uh, really create something new for yourself. Your major integrates different fields, different industries. Your major uh, is holistic. There was a lot of collaboration within your major between the three minors. You gained marketable skills with this major and you're very goal-driven and visionary. You took a chance, you did something different. You didn't just do the cookie cutter major where everything is sort of laid out for you. You really are, you really are goal-driven. So a lot of you have um, discussed how it's difficult to put into words uh, why you majored in multidisciplinary studies and what really your degree means for you. Again, you wanna practice this elevator pitch. Uh, you don't wanna come across as wishy-washy or indecisive. Um, so for example, this is what you should not say when asked about your education and your goals. I couldn't decide on a major, so I thought I could, could combine some things I was interested in. I really want a job in a marketing firm. Well, this sounds like you're indecisive. Being indecisive is not a trait employers are looking for. Employers want people that are decisive and intentional. So a better way to say this is, my multidisciplinary studies major combined my passion for psychology with the digital and business skills marketing companies are looking for. My minors in digital media and general business taught me to analyze the goals of my marketing clients. My multidisciplinary background in three fields helps me to problem solve on a more holistic level. So this sounds like you had a plan and it sounds like you combined something that you're passionate with, but you kept in mind what the industry is looking for with really marketable uh, traits. Here's another example, if you're maybe in the university studies major. I changed my mind about going to med school after my junior year, so the university studies made sense since I had a lot of classes in different areas. I would love to find a job in the healthcare system. Now again, this comes across as that maybe you didn't finish what you started. And I know, and all of us here know, that that's not, that's not the case. Education is a journey. You always have to reassess things. You have to pivot. You have challenges and you reassess where your, where your goal is. So, um, but the employer wants to hear something more decisive. Um, a better way to say this would be that the healthcare system needs strategic thinkers who can collaborate across multiple disciplines. 
My university studies major with an emphasis in health and human services combined my passion for biology with in-demand knowledge of public health policy. My minor in Spanish will be an asset in a medical position that requires bilingual skills. So again, this sounds professional. It sounds intentional, like you planned this major, and it really makes you sound confident. So that's, that's the goal. The elevator pitch needs to um, be something that you really can say. So this is a little wordy. I mean, perhaps in the real world, would you really say it this clearly? I, I hope so. <laughs> but the best thing to do is to type it out and rehearse it. Um, and it'll be more natural. The more you rehearse it, the actually more natural it will become. You'll become comfortable using this language and using these kind of vocabulary words. So I wanted to go over our resume uh, to give you an example of how we use those soft skills and hard skills and transferable skills. Um, down, we're gonna focus on the relevant experience and work experience section. Next week on Wednesday and Friday at noon, we will be going in great detail about the resume, really, really going into detail on how to craft a resume. But for now, let's talk about the relevant experience in the work experience section. So this person, brought in a class, a marketing project team member. So they decided to talk about their class, Marketing 525 Market Research. They talk about how they distributed a research survey to 300 students at the University of Mississippi with a group of five other market research students. So that bullet point really stands out. It has metrics, it's measurable. It shows that you really did a survey. I mean, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty difficult to build a survey and distribute it to 300 students. So that's admirable. The next bullet point says they used SPSS to analyze and interpret the collective survey data. So that bullet point references a hard skill without even listing it. And it shows that you know how to analyze and interpret uh, survey data. Finally, it says completed a research paper and conducted a presentation. So again, that shows that you can do public speaking, that you know how to present, that you know how to compile a lot of information into a document. Underneath the marketing project team member is a sales intern uh, role. So again, they talk about how they accompanied seasoned sales professionals and assisted them in conducting professional presentation to prospective clients. So that's another way of saying I shadowed somebody. Um, as an intern, a lot of the times you are just sort of absorbing information. So how do you put that into words? How do you put into words? Well, I sat in on a meeting. Okay, well, this, this sounds a lot more professional. I accompanied seasoned professionals and assisted them. Instead of just saying I shadowed somebody or I was an intern, this gives really, really professional sounding uh, bullet points for the resume. And last underneath, the relevant experience section is the work experience section. So this person in particular has a part-time job that's maybe not relevant to the industry that they wanna work in. So this resume is divided up into relevant experience and work experience. The work experience section says that they were a sales associate. They talk about customer service. They talk about creating advertising and sign displays. And they talk about how they organized and coordinated special events. So again, you could say, oh, I don't know, I just worked. I, I had this job as a sales associate. No, you did a lot. You know, there's a lot behind customer service. There's a lot of listening. Uh, there's a lot of um, collaborating and there's a lot of problem solving. So if you can find specific experiences, if you can think of a day when you had to take inventory or a day when you had to uh, call customers back to problem solve, um, you know, those are the specific experiences you kind of need to brainstorm. And underneath work experience, this person has leadership experience. So you may not think the social activities that you did on campus could make their way into a resume. But if you can find a way to show that you were a leader, that you participated on a level um, where you could organize events, uh, this person arranged volunteer activities for 15 members, Again, they say how many people, that really adds a lot of impact to a resume. Finally, underneath the leadership experience section is the skills section. 
This is the hard skills section. They put in Microsoft Office, Prezi, InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, and SPSS. So this is a really uh, great way to find, this is a great resume that highlights how to use those transferable skills that you have in undergraduate school and how they can transfer to your resume and the employer will read them and understand that you have the skills that the job description demands. So as I always say, don't put off today uh, what you can do today. <laughs> so I'll work on my resume tomorrow. False, you will start today. Uh, I think it's a great idea I, that you get started, um, even just brainstorming. Um, if, you're, if you're still a little bit far from actually job searching, just start brainstorming. As you're in a class, be like, hmm, this could be something I could put on my resume. Um, while you're in a volunteer experience, really think about that specific day. What are you doing that day? What kind of soft skills and hard skills are you using? And that'll really uh, come to help you out when you're writing your resume. So please join us next week. Uh, we will be going into in depth on resumes and that is next Wednesday or Friday at noon. So thank you for joining us and I hope to see you again.